at what point do we begin to raise the flag of genocide and begin to be afraid of it happening? So this is kind of the yeah. same rhetoric that um, older Fuentes was using and more extremist right-leaning groups, alt-writers online were using. I think that from, the, from, from those statements, I think you pretty logically can get to like, yeah, I mean, like I have to take like preemptive defensive action. Like I need to go kill some like Republican lawmakers. That would be the next step. So like, I. I, if I'm trying to be ultra, 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 ultra charitable, like you love the harassment. People like Demon Mama love to be harassed online. They get off from it, both like socially and like in terms of viewership numbers. Like they love the, being a victim is so much fun. Bro, I don't know. I don't want to like, uh, that's, and then that's called the chilling effect. <laughs> you can't criticize me. That's, that's the whole point of my criticisms, you see. We could either go by conversation or what might be more productive is to just like, what do you think Fosh's positions are, I suppose? Um, oof. <laughs> that's a rough one. I don't treat Fosh as like a 100% honest interlocutor at the moment. So if you would ask me what he thinks, it's probably going to diverge pretty significantly from what he says. Uh, but I don't know how much value there is there in trying to guess what his actual positions are. Um, I only say this because I have, as sad as it is, a somewhat high opinion of Vosh intellectually, so I can't believe he's as stupid as he pretends to be on stream, but it is possible that he is, so it's hard to say. Okay. I mean, what percentage do you put it on, like, sniffing your own farts or uh, kind of getting too wrapped up in hyperbole and stuff, and now he's kind of on the rails to uh, do that more and more? Um, I think he's pretty purposeful with his messaging. I think he probably thinks about it quite a bit. So I don't think he's just like full of himself. Um, I think that he, he's pretty intentional with, <coughs> with what he talks about. Bless you. Okay. Uh, where do you think he's getting those transgenocide stuff from? Like, where the hell did this start? Um, so if I had to guess, I think there's a few things going on. One is that these are hot button political topics. So there's a lot of viewership to be gleaned from it. Um, two, genocide plays well into like extremist rhetoric. So anytime we talk extremely about everything, that's always good for viewership. And then three, I think Vosh recently has had more infighting than he probably would care to have with a lot of far left communities online. So this is a, a way to kind of like build that bridge back. So I'd say those are probably the three big things. Okay. And so he probably doesn't see this as, as divisive uh, a topic as it appears to be with his other left early people, or maybe I'm missing like all the people agreeing with them, but it seems like a lot of people disagree with this. Uh, not in his camp. I think most people agree with it. They, they make fun of me constantly on his subreddit for how obviously correct he was. Um, so I think in his camp, I think most people agree with it. In most extremist camps, I think people will agree with it, but that's, that's kind of the camp that he's aimed, aiming to get, right? And are they believing in the easier things to believe in, like the idea of uh, telling LGBT people in America to arm themselves, or are they believing in the genocide part of it? Um, the genocide part of it. The arming stuff is just like a funny meme. There's probably not very many people that are actually going on and buying guns based on what he's saying, would be my guess. Because I don't think he's really, um, unless I'm missing anything, um, I don't think he's actually had any like good, interesting talks about firearms. Um, I don't even think I really do that much. But like, if you wanted to talk about like buying guns, like you could have a whole stream like, oh, like what would be fun to buy? What's good for self-defense? Um, you know, what are effective ammo types? Like, you know, how should you practice? What does it mean to like get into reloading? Like there's a whole bunch of interesting conversations to be had there, but he doesn't have any of those. He hasn't given any guides or anything about anything to do with firearms. It's just like the alarm is like, buy guns, they're coming to kill you, which is indistinguishable from Republican rhetoric anytime there's like a Democratic president. Yeah, that... That's kind of the interesting part is I feel like he could probably agree with Republicans on on some of the things that he says, uh, or at least responses to thinking the country's going downhill, although for different reasons. Um, so this genocide thing, like, I guess, how how do you feel about the stages as like an argument? Because that's what I'm seeing a lot on Twitter as well. Um, I think it's an interesting thing to look at, but only intelligent people should be allowed to look at it. Um, otherwise, it's just a tool <laughs> that can be used for dumb shit. Because the problem is that the way that they're written, it's vague enough that you could almost argue that like gamers are being genocided. Um, like... It's just it, like a lot of the stuff is, is going to require some pretty honest interpretation, like going through the stages of genocide and, and trying to say that, like, this is where we're at 100 percent is like the same way that people engage with like Wiki MD when they're diagnosing themselves with some disease like ADHD. Oh, I have trouble paying attention. I have this thing. Right. People say shit like that. And it feels similarly to that. Hmm. 
I guess for you, what do you use as like a better definition or way of examining whether or not a genocide is in its early stages? Um, early stages is hard because it can probably be indistinguishable from a lot of other things. But I guess I would look and see like, is, is a genocide possible? Like are the mechanisms in place to do it? Um, and in the United States, I just the answer is overwhelmingly no. I don't think there's that coordination or control doesn't exist. Um, the second question would be like, is there the will for it? Do people legitimately want to genocide a group of people? I don't think that will exist, except for in the most extreme corners of any political party. And then I guess three would be like, are people taking stages towards moving there in that thing? Yeah. Hmm. Now, if uh, if the legalization or like encouragement of Com, uh, conversion therapy for uh, trans people, mm -hmm. if that was something that started taking a bigger place, uh, you know, politically, and that was something that's being advocated more for, do you think that that is pointing us in the direction of genocide or that in those places where that's the norm that they are genociding trans people? No, I don't think I would consider that a genocide. Um, it's bad. And I think we've gotten like, I think at this point, I'm pretty confident in saying that like, Conversion therapy doesn't work. Um, all the evidence seems to point against it. But I still, I don't know if I would say conversion therapy is genocide. Okay. And if you had to steel man the people that are saying what's happening right now is genocide, like how would you do so? Um, Republicans are in control of a lot of the levers of power. I think Republicans in general, especially evangelical ones, which make up a huge chunk of the party, are ideologically opposed to even the existence of, at the very least, T people, if not LGBT people. Um, given the opportunity to run government efficiently um, and given the opportunity to authoritarianly shift it in their power through things of like gerrymandering and everything, Republicans are going to continue to grow their power over the government. And Didn't then if Republicans says. continue on their path of trying to infringe on LGBT rights, like we see them doing in a lot of state legislators across the country, we should expect them to take that momentum and carry it forward on the federal level until they're pushing more and more extremely anti-LGBT laws that could come up to and include like banning all forms of trans conversion therapy, um, like HRT and SRS, and then further more like either arresting parents that think their children are trans um, or forcing people to not even be able to have access to those types of medical uh, things in the United States, I guess, would be that. Okay. And do you feel like that's a fair thing to be concerned about? No, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Uh, why? Because the direction that we've ran on these social issues has gone 10 trillion percent to the left over the past 20 years. And seeing us take one or two steps backward and saying that's a genocide, like if that's the case, then we've been genociding trans people for, you know, decades in this country. And we just haven't been talking about it. But a lot of them might actually just say that. Yeah, of course, there's always been a trans genocide. Yeah, that's the that's the really tough thing with these arguments is like you can paint a picture of what you feel like is a really extreme direction that these things would go. And I feel like people are just willing to go, well, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's been happening for forever then. Mm -hmm. They don't really see the craziness that you're trying to point out there. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what to do about that, yeah. Mm. Um, one quick communications thing that I want to get out of the way as a question because I don't want people to think that like I am supporting the ideas I'm asking questions about is uh, if you're steel manning a position or if you're asking questions or trying to really understand where the other side of an issue is coming from, how do you make it clear to the audience that <laughs> you taught us how to fly. So, you don't believe in the how thing that you're asking questions about or trying to steel man or discussing? How, how do I make it clear that I don't believe? Um, oh, I'll just say it, but people are dumb as fuck and they'll assume whatever because people are stupid. <laughs> okay. And to deal with those people, you you just repeat that you don't yeah, believe in this thing? Yeah, I'll just say, I don't believe in this thing. I'm just like giving the counter arguments, yeah. Okay, because that's something I feel like Rose and I both, after talking with him, are like going through quite a bit on all sorts of issues that if we start like talking from the perspective of that side or trying to understand it, people begin to think that that's what we believe. Even if like 80% of the conversation is just like going against it, they seem to see that 20% and then mm -hmm. think that that's indicative of some belief that we're not being honest about or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so no no good solution there, I suppose. Um, but to be clear, I don't think that trans people are being genocided, although I guess if you change the definition, the definition or you pick one. Yeah. Um, 
and and do you see any like intellectual model or explanation of genocide that you think could produce better results than the stages people are using? The stages are probably fine. You just need to honestly engage with them. Hmm. And I think most people can, they're they're vague enough that you can kind of bend and twist it to whatever the fuck you want it to be. Gotcha. And I I don't know if everybody is reading into how you use these either. My understanding is that it's not meant to be some checklist where once you hit a certain point, then you start raising flags about this. Like some people seem to misunderstand that these things can happen out of order. Mm -hmm. Other people seem to be using it as a checklist that it doesn't seem that it's supposed to be for like in the early stages. I don't know. Yeah, it's not supposed to be a checklist. It's just things to keep eyes on. Like if all these things are happening, you should probably be a little bit worried about, you know. Do I need to destroy rocks to make other things appear, guys? Or will the things reappear naturally? Sorry, you're getting off. No worries. Um, and like, uh, one thing that I, I also struggle with that I feel like is a good thing to point people in the direction of that Vosh is doing is like, at what point do we begin to raise the flag of genocide and begin to be afraid of it happening? Because if you hit it too soon, there can be consequences, sure. But hitting it too late seems to carry even bigger consequences. So mm -hmm. how do you work around that? Um, yeah, I mean, you ask them. That's a good question. Because the worry is that if you hit it too soon, which is which I believe Bosch has done, is he's essentially saying a genocide is happening now. And I mean, like, killing people that are genociding you is probably, if there was ever a time to kill somebody, that would probably be it. So um, it seems like that's kind of where he's walked people to, right? Gotcha. And he for sure believes it's happening right now? Yes. I, I don't have the exact quote. Somebody check and look at what, But like he said that, like, yeah, it's already happening. Future elections are already lost. Republicans are already trying to genocide based on the legislation they're passing. Yeah. Has he said future elections are already lost? Um, I believe so. Yeah, he said that we're already going to lose the next election and that once that happens, um, that there's no way to win the next one because Republicans are going to lie and cheat and rig all the election systems. So it's fucked. Yeah. Gotcha. Because in the in the two conversations I've seen, which is the Beasley one and the Rose Wrist one, he seems to be very, very careful. Uh, yeah, he's probably more uh, careful in the he starts to get really careful in the Luke one. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, the Rose Wrist one. But yeah, he feels like a crypto Nazi who's kind of scared to say what they actually believe. So it's hard to figure it out. But in the Rose one, he said a lot of wild things. Or no, no, in the Luke one, he said a lot of wild, wild shit. Um, and I'm pretty sure up to and including that, that, like a genocide is already happening. Somebody can find the quote if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I don't think I am. Yeah, and if they can too, I would be very interested to have them. Like the whole purpose of me being here is uh, I want to get your points before I jump into like formalizing a, a big review of all these different conversations and any other clips or things that happened outside the conversation to get an idea of mm -hmm. where his positions are and if they kind of change as he's talking about them in different conversations because it seems that the the wide opinion is that he's changing his positions in these different conversations well it seems um, like he's a little bit scared to say what he actually believes so for instance like he, he he he'll make a joke a couple times saying things like i can't say what i actually believe because it would be tos so i, I don't know hmm. like when when somebody says that it's like oh, okay so he wants to murder people that's what it's that's what that sounds like to me but maybe i'm being uncharitable i don't know hmm. or not murder people and kill people sorry because it would be self-defense so not murder yeah and to people that might be saying that i'm being like too charitable to Vosh or they're worried about that like i'm i'm very much so working on the charitability thing this is something you and other people have brought up and i am trying to get better about it um but when everybody is railing against one side pretty hard to me that means that we need to kind of look closely at what they're saying to be accurate about the things that we have problems with and so that that's all that I'm going to try to do here. Let's so yeah. let's let's hone in on this. Um you talk about um nonviolent rhetoric. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a big advocate for defensive violence here, you know. Um I do mm -hmm. think we're in the preliminary stages of a genocide against queer people in particular, but probably adjacent groups as well. So uh, does okay. preliminary does that mean we're in a genocide now or not? I don't know no, what that means here. <laughs> If I were to map it onto his other statements, it sounds mm. like we're in the first stages of the 10. Okay, which, gotcha. 
Um, to me, it's like, well, given how many people could be in the first stages of the tent, I don't know how much value there is in that statement. Sure. But. Somebody else can find, I think he's made stronger statements about his currently being a genocide. But yeah, if anybody wants to have other clips that's, as well. But okay, but we can work off of this for now. Sure. I think yeah. he said we're in stage five. I've heard that before of like the 10 stages of leading up to a genocide too. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if there is another clip where he says something different that would be what i would be mm -hmm. looking for because a, a lot of people seem to at least communicate to me that he said it way more uh assertively yeah i think my uh, issue was that um i think he laid out enough that um it's funny he's actually making the bush argument um for basically like preemptive self-defense because in the luke argument um, he doesn't go on to say that, like, we would have been justified in killing Nazis. He goes on to say that the Jews would have been justified in killing Nazis before the camp started. So it seems like he's laid out enough of an argument to say, would you really attack somebody for preemptively self-defending themselves against genocide? And then saying that we're in the preliminary stages of a genocide that seems to logically follow them that we should be killing Republicans, right? That's what it feels like to me. I think the arguments are there for it. Yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to talk with you about because mm -hmm. in these conversations, that that's one of the things where I'm kind of iffy on, like it because he's also pretty explicit in saying all the reasons why calling for preemptive violence would be bad. That historically it doesn't work out. He doesn't think the utilitarian calculus would work out, even if there well, are a handful of lawmakers that. Does can't he really focus. say? But doesn't with the Jewish example, isn't he giving approval to do it? Like, doesn't he say over and over again, like you wouldn't criticize Jews for trying to do preemptive violence? Um, now, does he say preemptive or does he say defensive? Well, it would be defensively preemptive because you know the genocide is coming, right? Uh, yeah. Like if they're coming to round you up at the camps or something like that. Well, even it sounds uh, like even before that, if somebody wants to link a quote for Vosh talking about doing the Jewish thing. We're literally, like, if you look at any, like, lead up to a genocide, like, charts, like, where are you? Here, here, here. Like, it's not ambiguous. Those charts weren't written by leftists. I mean, we're at the point right now where, you know, um, right-wing media is coordinating to condition their audience to think of all queer people, or even people with colored hair, Jesus, as groomers and pedophiles, which is a clear element of dehumanization, which leads up to legal, uh, oppression which we're getting through uh currently right now unstopping and following that you know so here's the big the big difference though that is not something that even uh a large portion of everyone who's to the right of of me um believes in fully almost I every single care. person I talk to and if you look at polling but you should care because for a genocide to they don't have to be believe it on the horizon there has to be a you know, significant portion of the country that has enough people in power that could uh, make that happen. Wait, they do. Whereas right now, the major, vast, vast, look at any polling on any LGBTQ issue, uh, vast, vast majority of America is very the not Weimar, on board with, with the, the Weimar violence. Republic was the most progressive place in Europe before the Nazis took over. Republicans in 2024 are probably going to have all four branches, well, three branches, four seconds, uh, the presidency, the Senate, Congress, and certainly the courts. Uh, if you don't think they'd be willing to just start, you know, uh, 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 engaging in full stop legal oppression, uh, like their messaging for decades, they've been signaling this. I think it kind of gets the idea that like, we're like in the beginning stages of the Weimar Republic. We're in the beginning stages of like Republicans seizing power that like the next step is going to be like the Holocaust of the LGBT people, basically. Gotcha. Um, and, and here's where we'll get to a point where I hope this isn't being too charitable, but he, he doesn't say that like we're in the first stages of the Weimar Republic. He's saying that they were progressive as well mm -hmm. and they were one of the most progressive places and they were still able to do this. So even if polling of the majority says that they would be against it, that doesn't necessarily- Oh, sure, he might be making the argument that like, this doesn't save you, right? Which I can right. kind of believe, but then he goes on further to say that like Republicans have been trying to do this. They're passing laws right now to do this. Like you can't tell me that they wouldn't seriously try. Um, so well, it he's seems saying- like, mm -hmm. Like uh, that, that they would be willing and that they are engaging like legal oppression through the courts right now. I, sure. I, I believe, right? Yeah. I would just say that when I'm thinking of these topics, 
I usually whenever I'm thinking of a of a of a moral quandary or like a political issue, I usually try to immediately think of how it would apply to something that is completely opposite in the other direction politically to see how I would still feel about it. So when I'm thinking of these things that Vosh is saying, I'm comparing it to like great replacement rhetoric like Tucker Carlson. How would I feel if these types of things were being said by conservatives about like brown people or great replacement whatever? And it would be unacceptable. Like I would be having whole streams like rallying against this kind of stuff. I have in the past, like when I'm arguing with alt writers or Nazis or whatever. So there are like worlds where I can be ultra charitable here, but it would be uncharacteristically charitable. Gotcha. Okay. That's actually insightful and helpful that uh, the lens through which you're looking at it is like, if equivalent things were said by the great replacement people, do I feel like this is like alarmist and it's trying to point people in a particular direction that that's helpful to know. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I see a bunch of people linking a bunch of shit. Did you want to look at any of those clips? <laughs> um, Ra Rage Pub typed like a whole paragraph. I don't think acknowledging that you should arm yourself in preparation for a genocide and that the people who want to kill minorities are evil is an optical harm. I think you're falling for civility no, politics. No, but I'm saying that I'm not... Okay. In my own... Okay. You have to understand that a lot of people who aren't... Uh, I don't like using this because I know Destiny has like a thing against online lefties and it sounds like you have a obsession with it. Um, and I'm not super, you, super obsessed. Do you think it's a crazy online, lefties, online but wait, 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 lefty let me, thing let me, to arm wait, wait, me, yourself in hold preparation? Up, hold up. Just let me finish the thought. Okay. I, my point is most people, even who consider themselves liberal, who are a part of our broader movement, definitely don't think of the Republican Party currently as being preparing to slaughter minorities in that's the what i want to say so when you say that people go uh, well then ex you have to explain it in a way that comes off as sort of logical the way that you explain it is as if you're just as even though because i've watched you i know you're not so i take it more seriously but for someone else who hasn't doesn't have, have that underlying understanding of kind of your thought process then it definitely comes off as just as kind of detached but as i talk i talk to my audience right but i've about. explained my rationale dozens and dozens of times about the necessity of forming strong neighborhood-based political blocks, whether you're leftist or liberal. This isn't about socialism here. This isn't just about building communities that aren't going to roll over when authoritarians try to tear apart our democracy. I don't, like, I, 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 the, the thing is to me, like, you are the one more out of touch with America than I am here, because you're the one who flinched when I said you should buy a gun. You know, I'm in touch with Americana here. Now, I, I saw... I'm Guns in touch with Americana everywhere. here. Guns are. Why shouldn't we own them? Dozens of them. Thousands of rounds I don't of ammunition. Need a gun, Armored. Um, I didn't punch. Armored vests. I'm very un, un, uh, shocked by what you're saying. So don't, so don't worry. I my think feelings aren't hurt. I explain my rationale well enough. The precursors to genocide, what leads to it, that's a broadly recognized thing, not just some crazy lefty theory-based thing. The issue with liberals right now is they don't understand the stakes, you know? Liberals should be treating Republicans as what they actually are, evil and immediately threatening. I think that's kind of a, that's probably one of the more alarmist quotes, I think, that Republicans are evil and immediately threatening, but okay, all right. Yeah, I think that's the closest we're going to get. Sure. Um, so evil, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> broad, uh, kind of, uh, I guess, less helpful here, but definitely alarmist, uh, immediately threatening. This is another thing where it's like, this could mean so many things, like threatening in a legal sense, 110%. Uh, well, but, well, like, but look, we have to take it in the context of the conversation, right? Is he sure, talking what, just what is in a legal sense? We're talking about genocide right now, right? When he says uh -huh. they're evil, and then he says they're threatening, I don't think of evil people as threatening me legally. I think of evil people threatening me like extra legally, like extrajudiciously. That's tend to be what I would think. Or people that would abuse the legal system, like fucking kill me or something, right? Gotcha. Do you think it's fair to say that Republicans pose a threat to LGBT people? Yeah, ideologically, I'd say so. Okay. And I don't so think that makes them evil, but gotcha. Um, but but that would make them immediately threatening, no? Um, yeah. If you want to say, if you wanted to say something like, I think that they are immediately threatening, like legislatively. I mean, that's like just on its face true, of course. But I think mm. there's a bit of a difference between that statement and this and the, this genocidal one. I think those are a bit different. Yeah. 
though again we get back to that how do you define this because uh, there's so many levels of obfuscation here that give you outs if, if you're on vash's side that it makes it really difficult to cover i feel like because um, if if you're going by those stages and you think five is like more than enough already and you could see six or even more happening if they had control over everything then to you it would be immediately threatening yeah in a genocidal sense which like uh it, it, it makes it really really difficult to cover this like i'm still waiting for a clip that is like the oh okay well he says something really really different here and then this is problematic or whatever but like every time i ask for it we get clips like this which still they're, they're not really providing that and i don't know if this is just a rage pope thing or just in general with these conversations that that isn't there and if you look for it you're not going to find it well i mean i would say that like and i don't know if we've heard enough clips to substantiate this so far or if some of this is just being taken at face what i'm saying when you say that like we're imminently on the verge of a genocide the future elections are already lost and we need to start arming Does he ourselves. Say that? that what? That the that the future elections are already lost. Um, somebody give me a clip of him saying we've likely lost the next election, and that once Republicans are in power, that like they're going to try to destroy the democratic process. He said we're going to lose the next couple of elections. No, we're going to lose 2022. 2024 is still a toss up. Anyway, um, the the thing that I want to be insistent on here is that the threat of Republicans overturning democracy is not one which the democrats can stop only delay so they are going to do it right we like <laughs> republicans are absolutely going we can't stop them the democratic party can't stop them right republicans are explicitly anti-democratic and every year that passes they do everything they can to subtly tip the scales of power more into their hands when next the elections arrive on every level local state federal judiciary whatever it doesn't matter they are working against us and the democrats are weak they're spineless they're made of jelly they are not capable of defending us the way we deserve defense so we can't trust them to tip the scales back the way we would want them to we need to explore alternate solutions whether that be radical action or direct action or preparation for self-defense or hell all of them it is something that needs to be done so this is kind of the yeah. same rhetoric that um older fuentes was using and more extremist right leaning groups alt writers online were using was it like the main republican party has failed us they're not willing to do what they need to to defend us we have to take matters into our own hands was kind of like the a lot of the arguments from the hardcore like fasci groups from from the 2016 to 2018 time period okay um is vosh releasing some kind of manifesto no way okay I like <laughs> I'm trying to be so charitable to the chat and rebuild my relationship with them. Uh, but like, I'll tell you guys that I have watched the conversations and then you'll shit on me for not knowing about something that literally did happen in the conversation. Like, I, I just I don't know with the, with this chat. They're also saying that they're I should wait for some manifesto to release. Uh, oh, it's, my, it's a thing that I'm working on. Don't worry about them. Oh, OK. With nothing this. to do with this no, okay just wash lying in general but um and Ooh. trans stuff it's a totally different don't worry about that but um okay go for okay. it what were you saying um well no i'm interested now you piqued my interest what like are you working with people on this no it's just something i'm writing in my free time of which i have distressingly very little of <laughs> <laughs> slowly slowly edging my way up there you know okay so then i assume no timeline or when that would get released not yet you know it's out there in the ether okay keep it in the okay. back of your mind uh i definitely will and let me know when i should have it at the uh the forefront of my mind so that i could be ready to spend a bunch of time on it because oh, sure. <laughs> like i don't know one thing i've liked about your manifestos is that they're built up almost entirely of like the things that people have said which i wish more people would do like if your argument is sound and you can make it with what these people are saying, then make it with what the people are saying. Oh, Don't yeah. It's make not it like about... conjecture on Vosh did this and that. It'll be like, here's a link to this. Here's a link to that. Like, here's a link to this compared to this. Yeah, that's typically how it works. And there's a lot of video shit I have to go through. Oh, thank you, Mel. Yeah, like, which is why I enjoyed working with Doomer on that uh the, his piece about Vosh because it's mm -hmm. like oh okay you're actually doing the research you've got tons of timestamped links here like this is the way to do this if you would want to do this so mm -hmm. like I, I appreciate that approach a lot more yeah 
Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, do, you're not principally against telling LGBT people to arm themselves, right? No, of course not. Like everybody okay. should arm themselves. It's based. And calling for it isn't a problem. No, I think that's fine too. Now, is calling for it in combination with the idea that a genocide might happen in the country? Is that does that then become problematic? Mm. Here's what I don't like. I don't want somebody to be able to compile the statements that I've made and then put them in a document that rationally justifies a mass murder. And I think you can <laughs> do that with what Vosh has said very easily. Um, <clears throat> Republicans are anti-democratic. They've broken the rules in the past. They're going to break the rules in the future. They are most likely going to win 2022. 2024 is a toss-up depending on how anti-democratic they can be. The Democratic Party won't stop them or do anything. Republicans are already engaged in the preliminary stages of a genocide. And given the opportunity to run and have all the levers of power, Republicans will continue their march towards genocide, as the Nazis did in the Weimar Republic. And I need to arm myself and be ready for it. Um, I think that from, the, from, from those statements, I think you pretty logically can get to like, yeah, I mean, like, I have to take like preemptive defensive action. Like, I need to go kill some re like Republican lawmakers. That would be the next step. And I think it's all like laid out like pretty justifiably there if you believe everything that Vosh has said to be true. That's my issue. Okay, and and I think that that is fair. Uh, also, congrats on all those gift subs. That's huge. Um, Obama. <laughs> I'll shout him out because I feel like I'm interrupting it. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I, I especially with Obama. that, look at it as if you would an extremist on the right and see the issues in it. I feel like that's another time that lens comes in handy. Um, and... This is Obama. something I think that I discussed with Rose Wrist or maybe even with Lonerbox when I was talking with them about this. Um, like, if one trans person commits Obama. an act of violence, either against Republican voters at a Republican rally or, God forbid, against like a Republican lawmaker, mm -hmm. you push the scales Obama. of history in the direction of the genocide even further. So you should be incredibly careful about this. Yeah, because that gives them ammunition to do a lot Obama. of the things you're worried that they might do mm -hmm. and like and he seems to be aware of this when he's talking about how he can't advocate for violence because it might Obama. be done against the wrong people and whatever but at the same time painting such a doomer picture for people so i no wonder choice. if he yeah H have you seen anybody Obama. confront him about that particular line of questioning about how like if you paint this picture like this no but i want to feel... like so for instance today somebody was caught this morning in the early hours of my 1 30 a.m somebody was caught outside kavanaugh's house saying that they were going to kill Kavanaugh because of the Roe v. Wade decision. Um, I think that a person like that, now I don't know if they were a Vosh fan, but taking all of Vosh's arguments, Obama. you could very easily justify doing that, right? That's attacking one of the key institutions of power that's going to erode our civil rights. Republicans are going to keep going that way. Democrats won't stop it. But like, for some Obama. reason, all these crazy like left-leaning like shooters or killers or riots or whatever, somehow like the left manages to evade all responsibility or culpability for those events. I think that like, for instance, like the riots Obama. in Kenosha, I think that the left is directly culpable for that. Um, the uh, the churches burning in Canada, I think the left is directly one to one culpable for that. People like Lance Obama. like are directly responsible for those churches burning, uh, but somehow they like never are held accountable for that. So what are you gonna do? I think that like there could be a, a shooter right now that goes out and tries to kill some GOP lawmakers because he's worried about LGBT rights, and I, I, nobody would ever like stop to look at like Hassan or Vosh as being like culpable for that. So. Well, leftists are too lazy to write Obama. a manifesto, but if anybody were to write a manifesto before they went out and did something like that, I think all of a sudden things would change. Maybe. Um, well, I mean, Obama. like, is it a maybe? Because I feel like there's a high probability that that would cause like an immediate shift in talking about this stuff, at least on the oh, right. Oh, there was like a Obama. manifesto that included the names of like lefty people? Um, yeah. Maybe. With my luck, it's somehow it's going to include me, and the guy's going to link to shit I said in like 2017. That would just be the best. <laughs> but um, yeah, who knows?
what do you think about Vosh? Uh, because he, here's how I read when this happened is Vosh is aware Obama. that you gave a question to Rose and that Rose used it uh -huh. and that you're watching right now. And then it feels to me that he starts talking directly to DGG as if he was on your Obama. stream and you're not allowed to say anything. So when he's referencing things you've said in the past and whatever, that's what I think he is trying to do or something he's aware yeah, of. Yeah, everything kind of becomes Obama. about me. Um, I think he was suspicious of Rose Risk before Rose even mentioned having a question for me. He's always like very, everybody, Hassan too, like DGG lives in the back of a lot of these people's minds continuously. Obama. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, that's always something he's worried about. And did you feel like he was fair in his recollection of the things that you said or what problems do you have there? Because um, The problem is, it's like, as always, it's just like, it's a level one engagement from Vosh that is just like very stupid. Um, so like, for instance, like I don't disagree with Vosh philosophically here that like you should be able to enact violence to protect your rights or whatever. That's like, fine. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. My issue is if he's saying factually that we're at the point where it has to happen because he keeps linking clips of me on Twitter and a lot of people do to own me showing how much of a hypocrite I've become where I said that like, oh, I think that people could take violent action against Republicans, maybe even voters for a certain thing. But I was talking about DACA kids back then and DACA kids were actually one Supreme Court vote away from being forcibly removed from the country. That's wild. Like kids that might've been brought here when they were two years old are about to get tossed out of the country and thrown into like the Southern border, like into Mexico with, with no lives. It's just like, that's it. Um, and people are comparing my statements then saying, oh, well, look, well, you were in favor of violence then. It's like, why well, was like defensively? Yeah, but like these people were unironically like on the stage, like right before, if you, I don't know if you call it genocide, but like somebody forcibly deporting you out of your own house is about as violent as you can get short of like torturing or killing somebody. So yeah, of course I was in favor of it here. But people are trying to take those clips of me saying that. And it's like, well, why are you hypocritical here then for trans people? It's like, well, that's not, if people were talking about deporting all trans people, I would be in favor of, of preemptive violent action. Yeah, of course, that'd be insane. But we're not at that point, so that's my issue. Okay, I, I'm. So you would say that it's fair to say that you were in favor of violence then, because uh, I... well, my argument would have been that like what I would say always is that like violence is generally against the state. Violence doesn't ever give you an actual good outcome. Like you're not going to win. But like if people did it, I don't know if I could morally condemn them for it. it was essentially it was like a, a moral ph philosophical argument. <clears throat> gotcha. Because I I had defended on stream that like, well, when Stephen worded this, he said he could understand how people could arrive at that conclusion, how they could look at what's happening right now and feel justified in doing that. But I guess it's a step extra to say that like, uh, you're in favor of it, right? And I just want to clarify if that's the case or not. Yeah, I mean, like politically effectively, I'm never in favor of it. Although to be fair, Vosh tries okay. to say the same thing. Um, but I'm not telling DACA kids to go out and buy guns and arm themselves. But um, but I, I mean, like, I, like again, I don't actually disagree with anything Vosh says on a philosophical level. People should be able to defend their their persons and everything against like state violence, especially against fucking genocides, of course. Um, I just think he's factually misrepresenting if we're at that point yet. That's my issue. Gotcha. It's not the invocation of the take. It's that these aren't the same thing because we're not at that point yet. The yeah, same exactly. Way we were yeah. With... Okay. Okay. That that that's helpful to know then. Because I caught myself defending it as like, well, he didn't say that like he approves of it or anything. He said that he understood it, but that doesn't seem to be the problem there. The problem is that these are very different things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, here we've got um, one more thing. Okay. Oh boy. Um, because I'm a huge fucking cuck loser. Um, I'll be very charitable to Vosh here, and I'll, I've said that maybe he misspoke, but yikes. Let me know when you're ready for this one. <laughs> one of the things that I think you did do a very poor job of um, conveying, and okay, let me finish what I'm saying, but then I'm, I have a question as well, was you didn't at all divide until maybe the very end of your video between politicians and, and voters, and then went on to talk about... Uh, Political violence, build our democracy, kill them, and then he pauses for a long time. It was like socially, you know, politically, um, and they wants to the Republican Party, the modern Republican Party wants to personally murder every minority that lives within the border of the country, and then tell people to get guns. To me, that's expediting some sort of huge violent clash between two groups in the country, but not at all moving us faster towards squashing 
the fascistic element of the movement. You squash fascistic movements by winning the violent clashes. Hmm. So your political plan is to prepare for a civil war and then fight it. I don't know if a civil war is the right word. There's certainly going to be violence in this country during my lifetime. And if there is going to be violence, then I would prefer the people with the better morals to be the ones who are appropriately armed and prepared. But my right actual now, guess is that there's going to be an increasing divide between red and blue states, and that with control of the federal government, um, Republicans are going to attempt to impose federal law to control the blue states, because they can't control it with state law. Um, blue states, some of them will refuse, and then there might be clashes between state guard or police. You know, some police might try to enforce it, but like others will say like, no, don't do that. There might be attempts at ousting. Remember during the Black Lives Matter rallies, you know, there were like those Patriot Prayer dumb fucks rolling their, you know, $60,000 trucks through like urban neighborhoods with a bunch of guys with guns in the pickup trucks. When that happens, I want people to be able to take shots at them from apartment windows. So like, I... If I'm trying to be ultra, 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 ultra charitable, maybe Vosh means that if they were being threatened with guns from those guys in the trucks, you should be right. able to shoot at them. But, like, I mean, I'm engaging in levels of charitability here that Vosh would never dream of applying to me or anybody on the left would apply to me. But, like, yikes, that's a pretty... And I, and I would never give this level of charitability like Lauren or Fuentes if they were, like, saying shit like this. Like, it would be like, bro, come on, are you fucking serious? Like, this is civil war baiting, dude. <clears throat> okay, this, this is why I thought I should come on here. Because, like, I had heard this part and my brain just immediately went to like uh the context of this would mean that he's saying you know when the genocide is happening if these people are rolling down to commit violence we mm -hmm. want to commit violence back at them but like mm -hmm. it is so easy to interpret it the other way yeah. and i don't even know if that's unfair that like yeah yeah Okay, that's that, that's going on my list. That's it's especially annoying because the same group of people like fucking hunted the fuck out of me so much for the the whole the rioting needs to stop clips. <laughs> but at least I was talking about people setting buildings on fire. But now it's just rolling through neighborhoods with guns is enough, I guess, to to enact death sentences on conservatives. But hey, what are you gonna do? And I believe in the in the conversation he had with Rose, he did invoke that exact uh, yes, clip. Did. How did you? Yeah. How'd you feel about that usage? I mean, I think it's dumb. Like, I obviously, I disagree. But I would, I would say the exact same thing, though, if it was another situation. If you had conservatives going to LGBT communities, setting LGBT businesses on fire, and this is always why it gets so weird when, like, when people bring up these things, when, this, when these invocations happen. Because it's like, do you think that me, Destiny, would be opposed to LGBT people defending their businesses with guns? Like, Obviously, I'm going to be in favor of that. So I don't know why people think that invocation is somehow a revocation of what I've said before or some impugning of my character, right? Where people are like, oh, well, Destiny defended people defending their businesses being burned to the ground. So, you know, that's the same thing as me saying you should be able to shoot at guys with trucks driving through neighborhoods. Like, what does that even mean? That, that's, yeah, I feel like anytime people bring up my old shit, it's like they're either pretending that I wouldn't agree with something now that I obviously would agree with or it's, yeah, I don't even know. It's really dumb. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and and it, it sounds like this is a similar problem to the use of the other clip that we're talking about vastly different situations. Yeah. So philosophically, the, the grounds are the same, but factually what's happening is what's dramatically different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's another helpful thing I'll keep note of as well is like when, when we're using these examples, the hypotheticals or like... In his case, I feel like it's more of a hypothetical. In your case, we're talking about real things actually happening. Yeah, which is, because these neighborhoods are still burned to the ground. Like, you can still go through places in, I think even in Seattle still, where there are like boarded up businesses that are still closed from the riots. They just like never opened again and shit, especially post-coronavirus and everything. Um, I know in Kenosha, at least, there were at least at least one person emailed me. And I think one guy that came on stream to chat was saying as much too, that like, yeah, there are places in Kenosha that are still boarded up and like everything is fucked from all the riots and shit. <clears throat> Yeah, it, that's a lasting impact, um, and it's and it's actually happening. I I mean, like, I want to be so careful because I've seen the Twitter posts, and I know that if I cast doubt on the idea that the that some of these things that they're saying are happening are actually happening to trans people, it somehow like makes me transphobic or whatever. Like, how do you navigate that? Do you just like not care or wait that people are calling me transphobic or or that like 
any kind of uh, thing that you would say against this narrative or any question you would put on the genocide actually happening or if we should even refer to it as that, people are saying that that's transphobic or that's like... Uh, oh, yeah, ignoring. I just, I super don't care. Especially after all the engagement I've done with trans people at this point, I don't even consider a lot of these people trans advocates or even like trans people. Like, I don't think Demon Ma, I don't even know if I would consider her or if I, or having any knowledge of any of these issues. So I just, I stop giving a fuck completely. Um, they all just come off as like these reactionary like Twitter warriors to me. I don't think they know or care about any of the issues they talk about. And they turned into something much worse if it's ever used to justify violence. And I feel like we're getting to the point now where it's not crazy to think that that could happen. Yeah, I mean, and it already it has in a lot of cases, but for some reason, we just don't talk about it much. Um, I don't know why. Like, I've had people email me and link to me, like, a couple instances where, like, a left-wing shooter um, or, like, what happened outside of Kavanaugh's house today. Like, nobody's going to talk about that. But, like... It wouldn't surprise me if that Kavanaugh thing today has one day in the media cycle. I don't even know if I've seen a lot of people tweeting about it. Maybe some where people are. Um, but if that was a shooter outside of AOC's house, I think we'd hear about that for the next like three or four days. Yeah, that's a good point. Somebody had asked me to talk about it. Uh, I didn't know what the hell they were even talking about. I had to like look into it to have seen this thing about the Kavanaugh mm -hmm. uh, so is, that's a Supreme Court justice. What if somebody was outside like Ruth Bader Ginsburg's house? Not, not now, obviously she's <laughs> dead. But like if there was a shooter outside her house that was like thinking of killing her, like I think we'd be hearing about that quite a bit. Oh, and, and there was also, I didn't, I didn't even know about this. Nevi just brought this up in chat. I didn't even know about this. Somebody emailed me about this, that apparently some guy, I'm hesitantly quoting this because I didn't even click through the story. So hopefully I'm not getting this wrong. So I'm going to check if I'm wrong. But like apparently some guy went to a baseball game with the goal of killing Republicans. Like, he took a gun, and I think that he said it. He was, like, there to kill Republicans. That was his goal. I didn't even hear about that story. So yeah, it's like... That, that, that was the one that happened uh, a few years ago now, right? Like, they were having some Republican, like, baseball Yeah, something like thing, that, yeah. And came and they... But, like, if that was a person I, that had gone there to kill, like, lesbians or trans people or, you know, black people or, um, you know, Democrats or whatever, like, I, th I think I would have heard about that story quite a bit more than I ended up hearing about it, which was not at all. <laughs> And um, why do you think that that is? Um, well, because it's probably, I think there's probably a lot of parts of the media that are complicit in pushing like really fucked messaging that they would all have to be holding themselves accountable for if it was the case that we um, held ourselves accountable for. Yeah. Wait, Dustin, he actually killed people? Did that guy actually end up killing? Oh, fuck, I would have to go. I should read this story, I guess. Fuck. Um... Somebody said it was not it was not a Republican baseball game. It was Democrats and Republicans. Um, he specifically asked who was the Republican and shot at them, one of them being a GOP House member. Jesus. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like, could you imagine if that was, like, shooting at AOC or Rashid Tlaib or something? Like, we would hear about that a lot as an example of, like, how conservative rhetoric online is incensing people to violence, but... Yeah, hold on. I gotta ignore some people... <laughs> Uh -oh. I I'm so close to just closing it, but I'm really trying, Stephen, to like <laughs> hear hear these chatters out. But it's just it's uh <laughs> they dude that conversation that we had. So many people seem to hate me. That like the the massive shift in, in everybody hating me. It's just so it's so fascinating. Like I don't know. I, I'm sure you might think it's justified or whatever, or I mean, do you? Like, uh, I don't know. People, oh, I try not to think about stuff like that. You know? <laughs> it is what it is. Online communities do as online communities do, you know? Why haven't these large yeah, but, gem things respawned, guys? Fuck me. Go ahead, sorry. But they're like human beings. I feel like they're reachable. Like, if I could just show them that I'm being reasonable and stuff, I have some faith, but. Well, you should they see my conversation with the, um, with the guy about guilt by association. <laughs> Oh, uh, what what was this? What happened? Um, there's somebody who might be a human being, which I believe he was, um, <laughs> who is actually unreachable. W what did he believe? I can't even put into words how insane this conversation was. You'll just have to check it out sometime, but it will hurt. Okay. Do you think that they had some something going on personally, like? I I just, I can't put into words that conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> How long was it? 
like two or three hours. It was so bad oh that I brought God. in Pisco at some point to argue on my behalf. You can ask him about it. It was a, it was a wild one. Why do you entertain these things? Is it just for content or like? Well, no, because I believe the same thing you believe. I don't think anybody should be unreachable. And I have like, this is like a new political ideology. Like, I think I should be able to reach all people, especially if I'm like trying to be polite. And I did. I tried to like turn down the conversation, turn down the temperature a few times, like chill out, make everybody cool. But like, yeah, it was yikes. Human's going to human, you know? <laughs> oh, man. That's a whole other fucking thing to talk about. Like with the... Uh... I guess this is a good place to start with that. Like, do you find it difficult to be friends with Mr. Girl at all? Um, no. What do you mean? I can be friends with anybody. Because I saw you, it, it almost seemed like you were straining yourself to have the discussion with him about uh, Shaylin in that conversation. No, like, I just, I try to be really careful when I don't have, especially when it comes to relationships, I try to be careful about rushing to judgments. I think there's a lot of clips you can take out of like my relationships and I would be insane um, depending on like what you're looking at. And I'm trying to be a lot more honest with, like if you were to ask me like five or 10 years ago, I would tell you like, oh, I'm a very good judge of character. I can, I can establish everybody's motives and everything instantly because I'm fucking house MD and I blah, blah, blah. But now I like, I think I'm a bit more intelligent, a bit more matured. Like if I really don't have a lot of time that I'm spending with somebody, or I'm not seeing them in all these different facets, it's really hard for me to know 100% who a person's like. And I'm trying, I try a lot more now when we, whether it's breaking news or whether it's like personal relationships, I try a lot more now to think of like the all possible worlds thing, you know? And there are ways mm -hmm. that, um, that Shaylin and Mr. Girl, that Shaylin and Max could engage with each other privately that would like totally change how I would view some of these videos. Um, and there are ways that would make the videos even worse. But I just try to keep an open mind that like any of these things could be possible. So it would be a little bit silly of me to jump on like the ultra judgment train and assume one way or another. What do you think about keeping her off of streams, talking to people and stuff? I mean, like, that could be really creepy and weird, or it could be totally reasonable. Like, it might be a thing where she said, like, hey, like, I wish I could participate in these online communities. And he's like, no, you're absolutely never doing that. It would be horrible for you, um, which would be pretty shitty. Or it could be she's like, hey, do you think I should ever, like, post on, like, Twitter, or, like, make a Twitch account? And he's like, eh, I don't know. I mean, you could, but, like, there's a ton of fucked up people out there, and it's going to be, like, really shitty if you do. She's like, eh, okay, I won't, right? Either of those conversations could have taken place, and I don't know which one's taken place. So it'd be kind of silly for me to rush to judgment, assuming one or the other. Yeah, I, that that carefulness is probably the best way of handling things. But, like, do you feel difficulty in getting through to him when you're making points, like, in that conversation, or not particularly? Mm. I think he has a heart, I would say. Mm. And obviously he would disagree. But I think he has a hard time understanding other people's points of view. I would say that. But he's an empath. Yeah, everybody's an empath. <laughs> Not everybody, but yeah. I've met a lot of people. <laughs> Typically, anytime says they're an empath, I instantaneously assume they're one of the least empathetic people I'll ever meet. Um, and that's held to be pretty true for the most part, but... Yeah. Um... You also made a comment about uh, when you were talking with Brittany about how to interpret Mr. Girl. I, I forget the exact quote, but it was something along the lines of like, uh, maybe he doesn't communicate super well or what he's saying it does, isn't actually what he means. Or if you drill him down like a gazillion levels deep, there's something reasonable there. But the way he prevents it or, or uh, presents it is not um, immediately palatable you... or whatever. Yeah, like. <laughs> Like, could you expand on that a little more? Like, uh, like, are you providing that to him specifically in a way you wouldn't for other people? Or no, I try to. I feel like I'm pretty open for most people who are trying to understand like what they feel, what they think, what's going on. Um, people will hyperfixate on certain examples and say that I'm biased or whatever. But like, I think I try as long as people aren't shitting on me or it hasn't become like an aggressive confrontation. When things get confrontational, then I get more competitive in the conversation. But if people are just being like open and chill, I'll do my best faith effort to like understand anybody. I think I've, I think I've extended that charitability to almost anybody I've interacted with. Yeah, in like in this conversation with Vosh, I think you've been able to do it too, even though like I've seen your other reacts on it. I know you could get a lot more hot headed about it. So mm -hmm. uh I, I do I do see that. Um like but I guess that gets us back to the question, like, is it reasonable to expect other people to do that with Max? 
No, I don't think so. But that's one of the things I've argued with Max, that most people function off of like these really basic set of heuristics. And if you're going to act in a certain way, you can't really be surprised when people like avoid you immediately. Because heuristically, like 99% of the time somebody engages with somebody that has characteristics that are outwardly similar to yours, they would be correct in avoiding that person. You would just be the exception. But you can't expect gotcha. everybody to treat you as an exception, right? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. um, that And... Since you've brought it to his attention on numerous occasions, is it fair to say that he's then doing this on purpose or is that unfair? Yeah, he's very purposeful with the way that he presents himself. I don't think he would deny that. Okay. Uh, but do you think he's doing it with the intent of obfuscating what it is he's trying to say? No, I think he's doing it with the intent of saying that like people need to take him more at face value and stop playing so many mental mind games to figure out what he really means when he's being honest and upfront with what he's saying, I think. Gotcha. He would consider like the recommendations that I make about socializing would be like part of a social type game that he doesn't want to play. Do you think he is right in saying that? Uh, no, I disagree. Obviously, that's why we function. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Um, well, getting back to Vash, one thing that he does that I find really disappointing and like a non-starter for having conversations is he does this thing where if he can put you in a box, if he can call you a liberal or a DGG -er or any of these things, it feels like from that moment on, the conversation becomes like irredeemable. Um, like, would you agree that that is in large part why these conversations are going poorly? Or do you think there's something more going on there? Well, no, I think they go poorly because he's more concerned how to optically or rhetorically navigate a conversation while maintaining favorability in the eyes of his audience and potential audience than actually critically engaging with any of the points. So like when Vosh is talking to somebody, he's not actually talking to them. He's talking at an audience and that person is just a conduit for him to communicate whatever he needs to to continue to win favorability with his audience or potential audiences. In terms of like boxing people in, there's a lot of people that do that. That's not unique to Vosh. And maybe he does that to some extent, but he'll only do it insofar as it serves his rhetoric. Gotcha. And have you seen anybody who has successfully gotten past that or... Um, so you successfully gotten past that. Um, what's the last good conversation Vosh has had? I don't know. Usually when Vosh feels like he, I mean, like there's probably people that don't know who he agrees with, but the problem is when Vosh feels like he's starting to lose a conversation, like everything will go to shit. And then the good conversation basically ends. Like I've seen that happen over and over again, where he's having a decent conversation, but then it becomes pretty clear that he's starting to get on the losing side of the conversation. And then everything ends. I think I've done this on two different points where I point out like, oh, at this point, there's probably never, like the conversation is over. They're never going to re-engage on the point. And I'm usually pretty good at calling it out because it's like, oh, I can tell that Vosh is getting defensive here. And I can tell the other guy knows more than him about a particular issue. And once those two criteria have been met, Vosh will shut down and then engage in either ad homs or like the philosophical posturing with his failure to re-engage on the actual point. Yeah, my favorite example of that would be the perspective philosophy conversation. Yikes. Like, yeah, that, like, I, I can understand getting frustrated with perspective philosophy because it, it can be difficult to engage if you don't know all this stuff and mm -hmm. he brings up so much. That yeah, I have before, be yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... Uh, that shutting down and the ad homs and it's just like that that looks so awful that somebody who is so concerned with optics I don't know why they would make those decisions like, I don't think it looks bad or I don't think it's I don't think it necessarily looks bad depending on what you're going for like I think Vosh is still very much in like the 2018 or he's gone back to kind of this 2018 2019 mindset where it was like the way that you won audiences was by conveying strength um, that's how I operated initially. Like I could win audiences because I was like a liberal that could talk shit, a leftist that could hang with like the bad boys and be like, you know, use the N word and whatever the fuck people think. Um, like that would be the character of me so much so that Vosh unironically in a conversation is like, you know, you guys can just say the N word and it's okay. <laughs> like that's how much he tried to emulate um, the, the, like almost a caricature of like how people viewed me. But um, I, I, I've mostly moved on from that kind of like strongman posturing to being more empathetic because um, I think it's a little bit better at reaching out to people, but that's definitely the area like mentally where he's kind of stuck at right now. Or I say stuck. I mean, it's not necessarily backwards or forwards, but that's what he's trying to um, emblemize. That's what he's trying to be like right now. There's a word that I'm looking for, but. Mm. What, what led to you making that change personally? Um, I just, I noticed that when I, if I can acknowledge some issues that people have, 
and they and it seems like here is something that I notice. Um, I it's very weird, but like I apply a lot for my dating life or my hookup life to my political life to my conversational life um, and i try to see like what can i take from one thing to another thing and what can i take from one thing to another thing um something uh, without sucking my own dick too much um i notice that once somebody's had a chance to hang around me i notice it's very easy for me to get people to like me a ton um like a lot and i'm trying to think in my mind like well what are the things that i'm doing other than being devilishly handsome and incredibly clever <laughs> to make a vosh meme um but like, I'm trying to think, like, well, what do I do? What do I think I can provide people in conversations? Why are people so like, wh why do I have such a magnetic personality once people have gotten to know me somewhat? And when I think about like, what do I do conversationally that is different from other people? I think one thing that I do is I give a really high level of understanding um, and I provide like a very non-judgmental space. So if you've ever had the opportunity to hang out with me personally on a one-on-one, -on -one, generally I come off as very non-threatening, very understanding, very non-judgmental and incredibly empathetic. Um, and in thinking of like, well, political conversations, I think that I carry that over and I'm like, well, I can do the same thing like politically as well. And if I'm having a conversation with somebody and they feel like I understand their grievances, especially as a left-leaning person, um, that can be like a really good feeling. Um, so yeah, I just, I kind of carry that over from my personal life into my political life. And I think I've been pretty successful in appealing to people that are quite different than me politically, because at the very least we can start from a level of mutual understanding. Gotcha, gotcha. Um... And I don't know if this comes off on stream, and I will make up for my past transgressions about talking Wait, about hold you on. in private. Somebody <laughs> in YouTube chat said, Destiny uploads a Vosh video every day, it seems like. Listen, Booksparts came on to talk to me, okay? And those Adam and Sitch guys reached out to me, all right? I just, I follow the requests. That's your fault, Kay, dipshit. You should have been the one asking to talk about something different. So it's your fault that we're talking about Vosh again. Loser. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Mm. Well, when you do post hours and hours of Vosh content, then I'm like, oh, this seems like the guy to talk to about yeah, Vosh. True. I am the resident <laughs> Vosh expert, being his, uh, being his metaphorical father. Have you react? How many times have you reacted to that to his genocide conversations? Because I feel like I've seen at least like two or three different videos about it. I did the one time where I reacted to it. Then the leak, the Luke guy that talked to Vosh, he reached out to me to have a conversation about it. So if that counts as a second react, then that would have been it. And then the Adam and Stitch people reached out to me saying they were doing a live review and I could hop on if I wanted to chat to them. So gotcha. three times, I guess, if you were calling all of those twice for sure. And then three times you count the Luke guy. Hmm. Do, is a part of you, is your content brain happy when you see Vosh make these mistakes because you know that you're going to have a lot of content or not really? Um, I mean, content brainly, yeah, sure. It's always good when people are, it's like, you know, kind of like people like, oh, you're, the libs were sad when Trump was out of office. Like, well, to some extent, that's kind of true because Trump is a constant <laughs> goldmine of like hilariously stupid fucking things. Um, I mean, I don't want people like making calls to violence, though. I don't think that's a good thing. I'm not like cheering that on, like, hooray, Vosh is like fucked up, you know, doing crazy shit again, you know, but. Yeah, especially when you're realistically considering that there could be a shooter tomorrow that references him in their manifesto and like, that's a real concern. Like... Yeah, fuck. or even worse, somebody comes to fucking shoot me, Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe it's in your best interest not to talk to Vosh again. I don't know. Yeah. Um, does that disappoint you that you can't talk with him? Like, what are your feelings on that? Um, yeah, a lot in a lot of different ways, but not just him. I mean, this is like every left-leaning creator. Um, but the issue is always that like, that, I mean, it's on, it's on several levels. One is just cause it would be good content for both of us, which I think is kind of funny. Um, because everybody likes like crazy debates like that. Um, two, yeah. because it's really boring. I don't like doing react content. That's like so boring for me to watch a video. I'd rather be able to just engage with the author of the video live. It's way more entertaining to me. And that's where it kind of like, I, I cut my teeth debating people and shit. And that was my bread and butter content. So the fact that now nobody wants to argue about anything anymore, cause they'd rather just make their YouTube videos is a little bit like depressing. Um, but I mean like, it is what it is. I mean, I can't change people. Have you felt more alone since being banned from Twitch? Um, not as much, actually. I think my YouTube friends are a lot better, and I've been neglecting them recently because I've been so busy, but, um, I, I like the, I think I like the YouTube crowd a lot more. Um, they seem a little bit less insular. Um, there's a lot of mm -hmm. different types of communities that I think are nice, and, um, yeah, the Twitch crowd is, like, way, way, way more clicky, although that's more mainstream Twitch and not necessarily, like, the political crowd. A lot of the political people are still engaged with me, like, they'll hop on a chat or they're in my chat or I'll go on panels sometimes, so. I heard you talk about this and I started to think about like offline TV and uh, that that like Ludwig circle and uh, the one around Miskiff. How 
like when you enter that as a smaller streamer who's getting their start being in those circles, how scary it must be to know that you're walking on eggshells. You have to be very, very careful not to get in too much drama with anybody or it could be the end of you. Like mm -hmm. that's a it, I didn't think about that until you had mentioned it specifically about them. And it mm -hmm. made me start to see the content they make in their interactions like way differently. Yeah, it um, is really scary. Everybody is ultra beholden to everything that's going on because if anybody if you like for me for instance right like being on bad terms with hassan like axed me out of almost every event that that group did you know um be, be, yeah because like any live event they do hassan's not going to go if i go and hassan is a bigger streamer so i'm basically cut out of everything which is pretty annoying but yeah and to think that if anybody brought up that they liked you or Melina, it might cause problems for them is really sad to think about as well. Yep. Um, Even on his stream recently, I think somebody asked, like, is there any girl streamer that you'd never have on your stream? And he actually, he brought up Melina. He's like, oh, I've never had Melina on a stream. Who is a female streamer you wouldn't allow on your stream? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Audible. Even, even then, there is none. Wow. Oh, uh, uh, fucking, uh, 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 not Melina, Melina. Oh, that, that makes sense. There you Who's go. That? Destiny's girl. Fucking uh, wife. Destiny's wife, wife, wife. Yeah. Oh, wife. Nice. I don't Is know it? who they are, but well, fuck them, he I guess. It. Because she's married to me? <laughs> like, that seems really weird, but okay. And it's like immediately after saying any woman, he would bring on any woman and then they push further and he comes up with her. Yeah. And he's, and he's with that funny comedian guy too. And it's like... It, it makes me feel even worse when it's like these are people who have nothing to do with the space and this is the impression they're left yeah, they're like getting the knock like on some effects. Dude, yeah shitting on me for no reason yeah. well i shouldn't say for no reason we have a beef but like i would have no problem with the chapo crowd or anything obviously but yeah it's pretty annoying but that is what does it is. does that hurt opportunities <clears throat> for you as well with like non-twitch people that if these guys get a hold of them first they'll oh yeah dude there's you. so many behind the scenes games even today that goes on with people shit talk i had a lot of that with denims behind the scenes is a huge shit talker of me um and i've had a lot of people reach out to me saying like do you know that like she says like this kind of like crazy shit all the time and I was like, oh, well. <laughs> um, yeah but I, I hear a lot of that with that's why i always said that like and i understand people i look sociopathic but that's why i always say publicly that like if i'm losing a friend or if somebody is like we're like in the process of not trusting me or not liking me or whatever because of stuff that's happened like i'll never fight for that friendship because i don't have time to play all the games behind the scenes to go through all that shit like i don't care that much so fuck that shit it's 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 agonizing and miserable how much time people have to like gossip and, and do all sorts of like weird cringy shit behind the scenes yeah it, it may be i'm a simp or whatever but i also feel particularly bad for melina because it's like i don't think that she has much to do with the reason that people dislike you or whatever so why yeah. she gets caught up in it i don't well she's been a doing a better job recently like getting out to events and like meeting people in her life and like squ i think she squashed her beef with like um with almost everybody at this point like she met minx and they're like cool not everything but yeah it is really sad that like she ends up basically getting caught in the crossfire for no real reason even right um Keffels tried to destroy her and i think vosh does a little bit too because she ended up liking a tweet of lauren southern and didn't realize that the original tweet was referencing like a transphobic comment so now people say that melina is like a white nationalist transphobe and she just has like she's like not plugged into that shit at all so she's like i don't know what the fuck is going on so yeah it's pretty sad well, that's one thing I had to learn too. We're not allowed to like Stone Toss comics. Is that a oh, thing? Oh, apparently he's a Nazi. I don't know if he's a Nazi or not. He actually DM me on Twitter once. He said, Just you know, I'm not a Nazi, but a Nazi would say that. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, yeah. Apparently he's like super like anti SJW or something. So people like really don't like him. But I, I don't know if he's an actual Nazi or not. I just know people get really mad at his shit. But like, like, would your advice to me be to not like that? Because I genuinely like Stone Toss comics, and now I'm like, kind of scared. I mean, as sad as it is, I'm actually more copying kind of like even current day Nick Fuentes. Um, I'm copying his rhetorical strategy a bit more, where I'm just being like, I'm I'm starting to surround myself with more armors of irony. Um, it gives me a lot more flexibility to be who I am without constantly being attacked for it. So like if you've followed my Twitter lately, I'm, I've gone full on like hardcore edgy with jokes now, like N-word shit or saying slurs. I don't <laughs> like type slurs, but just like jokes about it. Um, but now it's gotten to the point where people don't call me out for it anymore. Like before when I would make like a blackface tweet or like a tweet with the word like
uh, in it or whatever with a black person saying it, there's like all of lefty Twitter is blowing up calling me racist. But now when I'll tweet things like, oh, I can't resist saying slurs, nobody even says anything. It's like, oh, Destiny's being ironic again. So I think that I think that Fuentes had like the upper hand there in terms of like the 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 effectiveness of being like ultra ironic. Um, because now I can just be ironic about everything and nobody like seems to care that much about what I say. It's like, okay, fuck it. I'll just, I guess, follow this path for a while. As stupid as it is. Yeah. Steven, when you say the N-word, you hurt my feelings really bad. That's I hope good. you know I'm that. I hope so. <laughs> the, those memes, I swear to God, like, dude, I, I, I used to have so much fun in DGG. I used to have so much fun, and I I feel like I have less fun now. Now they, they I mean, get if you they want get the annoying. secret. The secret is that like <laughs> you you always have to like keep moving forward. If you if you let one event define you, it will define you. And then if you disappear, that'll be the last thing people remember. But listen, the streamer's creed. Okay, people only remember your last three streams. So if you just hang out and you keep chatting, you can like meme everything off and be like, ah, oh, fuck it, and then you're done. And then people will forget and you'll reintegrate. This is why I always say shit. Like, I don't care about, like, like you open this up with, like, apologies. I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. Like, you just keep moving forward and people will do whatever. It's all good. It's all, it's how it always works. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's, that's good advice. I'll stick to Because it. if you have to think of, like, when people think of you, like, what, what do they think? It's actually exactly what you said in the beginning of this. Well, they think of the last conversation we had, which was, like, pretty brutal. <laughs> right? But then that's all. <laughs> but they haven't seen good. you in chat or they haven't seen anything else. And so, like, yeah, of course, that's the only thing they'll remember, you know? But like, yeah, I streamed the day after my dick pics were leaked and then in three or four days, nobody was talking about it anymore. So fuck it. <laughs> you just gotta keep moving forward. Yeah, uh, I had um, I had an IRL friend that I was talking to and it came up what I did for work and they sent me <laughs> your picture. Nice. <laughs> it's like some kind of meme to me. I was like, that's really weird. Like I, I, I've talked to this guy like numerous times. I've like, seen him irl we've had dinner like bro this is cringe you wouldn't do this with like anybody else i don't know the it, it's weird how people treat us and i i'm still getting used to it mm -hmm. um like like people really think that like i police black people's use of the n-word or something like like it's just <laughs> i'm sorry like... I, just, I remember that whole ordeal <laughs> what a uh what a time yeah and i don't know if in hindsight i should have done like a whole response to it and whatever i figured i just wouldn't like but uh i don't know i i don't even know how to handle these things when they happen like with your stuff i figured like okay let me take a hard look at like what went wrong there what did i do wrong how could i fix that moving forward i did the stream about it it felt like nobody listened to it and they just kept shitting on me and mm -hmm. uh maybe the advice is what you said i should have like kept showing up here and talking with you it's just like it's annoying when people are like uh oh he's doing it for this reason or that reason or he 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 ran out of money for the month or these these other memes and stuff and i don't want it to be misconstrued why i'm like showing up or something but maybe i just have to like ignore that shit i guess yeah, just ignore it and keep moving forward that's all you can do i guess um uh, <clears throat> so this wearing the edginess as a kind of ironic armor mm -hmm. like do you feel like the reason why you can make that decision now is because you're like so many people dislike you or already believe in crazy shit about you or do you feel like you could have done this way sooner mm. i'm not sure actually i don't know hmm i feel like i probably I could have done it way sooner I think the issue is that, like, I policed my language harder than really almost anybody else was online. Like, I was ahead of the curve in getting rid of, in getting rid of the Epsler. I was ahead of the curve in trying to stop using the word retarded. Um, and I, I think that maybe I might have created, like, my own culture that, like, held me more accountable than it. Kind of like, I guess I talked to this earlier about how Democrats hold themselves more accountable than Republicans. Um, I probably went too extreme on that, maybe. And then it made it easier to attack me. Like when I'm using a standard that is like so much higher than everybody else's and then enemies are holding me to that standard that they don't even hold themselves to, um, it gets pretty difficult to abide. Kind of like how like, um, I think even you were critical of me doing this. Um, when I said that I was no longer going to be banning people for like off-platform stuff or I wasn't going to do off-platform bans for Demon Mama, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, people started calling me. I'm the only streamer that does that. Literally nobody else does that. And like to have a community my size where I was willing to police something like that is such an above and beyond thing that any other larger streamer does. But by holding myself to that standard, like people would attack me with it in like these really random ways. If anybody says anything bad in any Twitter DM or any Twitter mention ever, like all of a sudden I'm like ultimately accountable and shit. And it's like, I like it's such a it's such an elevated level of responsibility for such a smaller payoff. And there's so many detriments to doing it. So like, fuck me. Like, I don't know. Well, they never used it in the way that it was designed. At least that's what I feel like I'm picking up from RTBA and stuff like RTBA and the other mods. They make themselves available to people like nobody cares. And- Dude, RTBA sent me so many screenshots of him reaching out to other people in other communities. They're like, oh, well, I'll get back to you when I can. Or like, oh, I don't have time to go through everything or they just don't respond. Like he sent me so many screenshots from different communities of like people doing this. I was like, OK, well, you don't really give a fuck about the harassment. Like you love the harassment. People like Demon Mama love to be harassed rest online they get off from it both like socially and like in terms of viewership numbers like they love the being a victim is so much fun it's so much fun and it's so cool and it's so awesome you get so much credit for it and you get to pretend that you're suffering and you get to substitute the whole never having a personality which is being the perpetual victim that it, it's like it's super beneficial to these people i mean well, look at i mean for no for evidence that just look at that one crazy um Maddie Cakes person who was literally faking logs of people harassing her. She was writing her own negative comments herself in a Photoshop. Like that's how much people are obsessed with being victims. So I still talk with people today about how surprised I am that she didn't get in more trouble after the Prime Kai thing. Like which you one? You can dislike it, like with the with the fake how she was. Well, how she was talking with Katarana about how things were going in her discussions with Prime. Like oh. uh. Like, I, I feel like you can dislike Katarana and stuff, and I can understand how she had a, a part to play in that. But, like, when she's being fed information that's not correct, like, I, I don't know. And then it doesn't feel like, from my perspective, that Maddie Cakes was blamed nearly as much as she probably should have for all that. Yeah, somehow she also eludes a lot of a, um, a lot of accountability, but what are you going to do? Yeah. What, like, what is the explanation for that? Like, how does she just have a really good community, or what? Um, it's just those types of people when you're when play team sports hardcore, like that Josie person. She's actually an unhinged, deranged, insane fucking individual, um, and she just says so many off the wall, batshit, insane things, and she'll never get held accountable for it. Uh, but they like they surround themselves with the same like team, and they just don't care. Um, yeah, they why would they ever hold accountable somebody on the same team as them? Like, there's no social advantage to it some people just seem to be like teflon like nothing sticks and they're able to do whatever uh mm-hmm. i mean it just, it just depends the, on like what kind of what they do or like what their communities are yeah and a lot of these like ultra progressive communities another thing that's like really important i think keffels did a really good job at kind of like being the the symbol of this more than anyone i've ever seen um when you're ideological opponents are like actually evil people it's kind of permissible to do anything you want to them because they're evil um, and Kevils is a really great example of like being able to like like she will outwardly say like oh like I'm trying to I've 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 ratioed this person on three accounts even after they keep blocking me <laughs> and people are cheering for it. And it's like bro are you serious like you're actually har- you're harassing and brigading about it. you're actually harassing and brigading like if this person has blocked you three times and you're still ratioing them behind different accounts what the fuck is wrong with you but um if if you think your opponents are evil every action becomes permissible you know yeah. Uh, okay, so it definitely is Samantha. Um, on that topic of uh, of this harassing and brigading, do you think it's fair to just make the call as a creator that you don't want to talk with somebody anymore? Like, yeah, uh, like it just depends on what you want to, how, why you want to do it. Like, I can understand yeah. people trying to avoid Keffel if you're a smaller, because you're just going to get harassed and brigaded, unironically. Um, and the harassment from those communities is really bad. Like, they're 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 the literal equivalent to Nazis because they're coming at you with what they feel is like this moral call. Like, they have like this divine command from from the LGBTQ God to to do whatever the fuck they want to you. So yeah, it's really scary to interface with those communities. And. To kind of segue this back into the Vosh thing, like, do you do you think it's fair to be upset that somebody who knows that you're not willing to talk with the person is taking questions and stuff from that person? Or do you think that's over the top? Um, it's probably fair for Vosh to be upset about that if he's trying to avoid me. Although I would argue that Vosh's avoidance of me um, is pretty shitty because um, he still t- constantly talks about me and makes remarks about 
like what I do. Like if something positive is posted about me on his subreddit, I know because I still check it every morning when I wake up. Um, if something positive is posted to me, it'll get deleted pretty quickly. But if something critical about me is posted, that it'll stay up until it gets like 400 comments. <laughs> uh, and then they never get deleted. So like he's kind of in a fortress arc where they don't want to talk about me anymore. But if he can farm negative reactions about things that I say, he'll leave those threads up, which I think is like pretty funny. But... <clears throat> funny uh kind of scummy i don't yeah, know i mean it is what it is like the rule should probably just be no mentioning this person it shouldn't be based on what the coverage of the person is that seems to defeat the purpose in my mind well i mean that's what um yeah i mean that's it is what it is <laughs> i guess um so like i i was talking with rose uh about that conversation and i told rose or presented the question, if you were to be able to go back in time with hindsight, would you still have taken the question from Destiny? And his answer was yes. And I told him I was a bit disappointed by that because I feel like that predictably led to the conversation going south. There were other reasons it went south for sure, but that's not helping at all. And I don't think that it added nearly as much as Rose had thought that it added to have asked it. And I don't think he was going to get an answer regardless of if he rephrased the question or not. Like. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know. Um, it depends on like what his goal was for asking questions, but okay. Kevils hides the evidence of her doing a stealth YouTube stream, which breaks Twitch too. Oh yeah, I have actually. Um... Oh no! Don't, don't we all? What is um? Who messaged me? Oh no! Whatever your name was, it messaged. I forgot her name. Some somebody messaged me, and she gave me. She uploaded like a private YouTube clip of that Kevl show. Oh, I probably saved it actually in my manifesto. Um, yeah, where Kevl just like calls someone the f word, <laughs> and she's like, "Am I allowed to do that if it's not blah blah blah?" And then yeah, Kevl's DMCA'd it. Well, Kevl's. D oh wait, Pretty Tony, were you the one that messaged me? No, it was somebody different. Um, the girl that originally made the clip messaged me because she made one public YouTube video, but she made a private YouTube video, or that was an unlisted one that I don't think got DMCA because Kevl doesn't know about it. But um, yeah. Uh, so she, it, sorry, I'm lost. Did she just say the F slur? Is that it? Well, she said like, um, I think that it was something like, now that I'm streaming on YouTube, can I call this person a faggot? And it was just like, it was super out of left field. I was like, oh my goodness. why the fuck would you say this? Like, it wasn't <laughs> like, it, it wasn't a joke or anything. It was like, I totally don't understand. Tony, I don't, if you have a clip or like a streamable to that, it was like super, it was super bizarro. Oh, and there might've been something about telling somebody to kill themselves too. It was a couple of things. It was like, what the fuck? Like it almost felt like, like I almost wonder if it was like, it's like, this is a deep fake. Like she wouldn't really say something this is stupid, right? I'm trying to see what I can get away with on YouTube because I can't. Wait, does my Twitch partner contract follow me to YouTube? So like if I called Jalen like a fat on YouTube, can I get in trouble? Okay. Trouble on Twitch. That's, that's a little. That's a little zero to 100, but okay. <laughs> Jesus. Wait, can I tell someone to kill, can I tell someone to kill themselves on YouTube or is that like against the rules too? Is she like, do you think she's just like really drunk or something? I'm so confused. I'm trying to figure out, cause I can say slur now. I don't remember who sent me the original. There's a whole video of her saying a couple of weird things, I guess when she thought it wouldn't be saved, but I don't know. Maybe calling people pedos, cucks, and perverts in, in, in response to pushback isn't, isn't what? Isn't a great thing? How about you fuck off and get out of my chat? No one loves you. No one in your entire life has ever loved you. They all pretended to like you. Leave this place. You're not welcome here. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, sorry. Ish. Back on. Yeah, track. she's What's just up? mean in those clubs. She like... she is an ultra trash human, like one of the worst humans I think that I've ever like quasi interacted with, uh, like just like a bully. But I mean, hey, what are you gonna do? I mean, when bullies get like divine right, it's like the best. Co it's the most fun combination of things ever for them. Like the like the real life version of like an internet janitor. Which is weird because like. I don't like we were talking before about how when people shit talk you or they threaten to kill you or any of these things like it's easy content because you're in the right to respond however but I feel like you also have this unique opportunity where like if you handle it chill and you're like mature in the way you respond you look even better than if you were to just like unleash on them like an asshole and I don't know why people I don't know if that's true 
Hmm. I think most people want to see people go hard. Like, I think if you feel like you have a divine right, you want to crush your enemies in whatever way possible. Like, anything is permissible. Like, what did I tweet out? Um, somebody got mad at me because I didn't care that Kethels got doxxed. They were like, Destiny said he doesn't even care. And it's like, yeah, no shit. Why the fuck would I care if somebody got doxxed after they bragged about getting me banned from a platform? And like, don't you understand? This person got doxxed. Like, they could get hurt. Like, this person has already claimed to do something that's worse than doxing somebody to me. Why would I get? But like, they, the person couldn't understand. And eventually they were just like, you're stupid. I'm not even going to talk to you. And they're like, okay. But like, like in people's minds, there's like no, like they just have no comprehension of like anything. It's just like, it's all like team sports, I think. Oh, I guess I was thinking of a different type of scenario. Like, I remember one specifically with Dima Mama where, uh, like, <laughs> I know the reputation I have here for Dima Mama about the overcharitability and stuff, but in her community and what she tells them is that, like, I'm like a diehard DGG dick writer or something like that, and I'm a, I'm a Dima Mama hater and all this other stuff. And we watched that on stream and then I was just like, well, this isn't going to stop me from like trying to hear this person out when they talk and stuff like that. Like, that's what I mean is like when you're given that and you have the reputation that that I would have like, OK, well, that's clearly not true because we treat her more fairly than I think any of the other react people that watch her stuff that aren't friends with her treat her. So, I mean, like mm -hmm. in this case, I'm just like, well, I, I'm not doing this to be friends with her. I'm not doing this to have her say nice things on stream. Like, I'm doing this to try and be fair. And, you know, if she says these things, that's not going to sway that one way or the other. Like, that that's what I mean is, like, that being the bigger person. But, yeah, like, saying you don't care if she was doxxed, I feel like that, that could easily be interpreted a different way, e even if it's, like, an indifferent statement. Um, Maybe, I guess. Sure. Hmm. But pushing you on it and being a dickhead about it, like, especially if you're in this community and you know about that stuff, that would be a little bit strange to me. Like, he, he just said he didn't care. Like, I don't know. Of course he's not going to care. Like, yeah, but, like, not caring is the same as, like, explicitly approving of it or even contributing to it in these people's minds. Like, everything is, like, zero to 100, you know? But That's, that's fucking crazy, though. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> but what are you going to do, you know? You just keep streaming because I'll forget. Keep going, yeah. <laughs> One direction <laughs> forward. That's right, baby. You got it. Um, uh, another question about the Vosh thing. Do you think that people are lying when they're saying in the genocide thing? Or do you think they, they honest to God believe that? Um, that there's a... Um, Vosh does. And I think he's too smart for that, I think. But who knows? Um, people in the audience? Uh, I, I don't know what people believe anymore. It's hard to say. I'm not sure. Okay. Why don't we just use trans erasure? Did that just not have the impact nope, that people wanted to have? People want the gen genocide wars. Way more fun. Way more impactful. It gets people way more riled up. More viewership. More donuts. Okay. Could it possibly be that we've just tuned out that phrase and so now they need to move to another one? Or, or is this a content creator focused thing? Um, I think it's a political focused thing. You, you know, I want you to pay attention to my issue. If you don't, you're going to get genocided. Like, it's just you want to always get as much hype around your particular issue as possible. Do we have any mainstream people jumping on this trans genocide thing or is it exclusively in this community? Around trans genocide, no. But like Republicans have always been talking about how it's the end of the republic and Democrats are going to destroy the country and Democrats talk about how Republicans are going to destroy it. Like everybody's always just like on that shit. It's like part it's just part of political discourse, unfortunately. Okay. Um, have you heard about what Chud and Rhizome are planning to do? No, what are they planning on doing? They want to do something based on like kitchen nightmares, but it's like streamer nightmares where they have smaller streamers on and that they give them advice on how to be better streamers or what might be wrong with their stream or what's turning people off and stuff. Okay. What do you think about that? Sounds fun. Yeah. I they have a better idea. They... Ooh. Mention... My idea was to do a... Um... <clears throat> Wasn't there a reality TV show brand where it's like, so you think you can whatever? Am I making that up? Yeah, so you think you can dance? Yeah. My thing was, because at the time, it's probably still like this, but in Twitch culture, smaller streamers are like the worst group of human beings. They're entitled. They're lazy. They just, I fucking hate them. They're just so cringe. 
And um, they always say like, oh, big streamers don't even work hard. They just got grandfathered in. They don't do anything to earn any of their shit, blah, 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 blah. They're constantly saying shit like this. And I thought it would have been funny to make a, um, to make a program called So You Think You Can Stream. And what you do is um, you'd bring like a small streamer on and you would have like a panel of like big streamer judges. And you would basically for one day, you would have that smaller streamer live like it, life as a bigger streamer. So you would um, you'd get like your panel of big streamers to host them and hopefully they'd have viewership because it'd be like a funny event. Um, and then for one day, this streamer would have to stream for like 10 hours and they would have to stream as a big streamer with the full audience, but they would have to make sure that they conducted themselves properly the entire time. And you would have like challenges set up to make sure that they were like doing what they needed to do. And the the challenges I think are what would make the event like really funny. Um, so for instance, like there might be a time where like, oh no, like one of your mods accounts got hacked and they're like spamming like the N word or they're unbanning like racist accounts. You have to keep <laughs> streaming and be entertaining the entire time and not get upset while figuring out which one of your mods did this before your stream falls apart and you get banned from Twitch. Um, like, yeah, there'd be like a bunch of like challenges like this. Um, you know, like you're getting stream sniped in games from people spamming racial slurs. You've got to mute them before Twitch like bans your game. Like all, like just a ton of shit that like big streams or like somebody's hacked your PayPal account. Like you've got 30 minutes to like submit a help thing to Blizzard and get or whatever like PayPal to get your shit back before you like lose all of your donuts for the day. Um, and it would be really funny to throw out challenges like that to um, to like smaller streamers. And then by the end, they'd get rated by the panel of judges. Like, hey, like you were really quick at responding to this, but like, you know, you fucked up when you did your password recovery for this and now you've lost that, you know, like shit like that. I think it'd be really, really <laughs> funny to run somebody through the challenges of like when you're a big content creator, this is the shit you deal with. But yeah. Holy shit, why don't you do this? I'm way too lazy. But it would be a really fucking funny show to see somebody, like, freaking out or whatever. <laughs> like, with all of the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would be awesome. Put yeah. a fucking heart rate monitor on. Like, oh my god. Oh, yeah, the heart rate monitor too. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's an LSF <laughs> hate thread about you. Uh, it's got 30 comments and 200 upvotes right now, but it's only been posted 30 minutes ago. Do you want to respond to it or do you leave it grow? Will it fester? Like, there's, like, so much shit you could do. Um, and then at the end, and then you'd have like the big debrief at the end, like, well, how did you feel? You were a big streamer. And there'd be like those come to Jesus moments, like, yeah, it was a lot harder than I thought. You know, I've got a lot of respect for it, blah, blah, blah. It would be like really funny to see shit like that, I think. It'd be, like, you could do like all the reality TV show music and everything too, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it has the potential for a mainstream media thing to cover it as well, like, which I think would be huge for its popularity. Like, having. I could see Vox or some shit posting an article about this. Have you ever thought of how easy it is to be a streamer? Well, this show tested it or some bullshit like that. Yeah, potentially, um, yeah. A lot of the jokes would be pretty inside streamer jokes probably. But yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of potential for that thing to be. It would be really funny. <laughs> but Yeah, I, I like that idea. Uh, I know you're too fucking busy, so it'll probably never happen. But Well, there you it's go. You can do now. that idea, okay. No, I would need to be a big streamer for that. I'm nowhere close. But um, hey, one day, one day, um, that that's another thing. Um, like, so the talk on Twitch politics now is that since you're gone, everybody will just fall apart. That everybody will lose their channels and their viewership, and they'll never be able to grow and et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of people talk about branching out. Like, what's your experience having done this for a long time with like branching out, like? How do you successfully do that or or like what are good examples of that that you've seen? Um, branching out is very, very, very difficult. Um, you have to be built. You have to have like a really entertaining personality to be able to just branch out and do totally different things. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just going to depend on the kind of person you are to, to see if you can do it or not, right? Yeah. Um, what, what are some good examples of streamers you've known who have like successfully made that transition? I mean, arguably XQC did. He used to be a professional Overwatch player and then he became like a variety streamer. Um, I think a lot of the WoW guys kind of did. Like Asmongold now is more than just a WoW streamer. He's like a variety streamer. And how did he accomplish that? Was that like networking with other people or React Danding or like... Um, I mean, part of it is like, I'm going to fucking die to this stupid fucking AIDS shit, dude. Um, it just, part of it is being like super networked. Part of it is coming with a really big audience from, um, World of Warcraft already. There's like a lot of things that go into it, but like at the end of the day, it's about having an entertaining personality basically. Yeah. Why do you walk in the middle of the room if that's the attack he's doing? 
why it doesn't matter where you walk. He's always going to target you. It's, I have to manage my cooldowns on my dash and everything. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's unfortunate. It was looking good for a while there. Thanks, yeah. But he fully healed on his civilian, so. Uh, what game is this that you're playing? It's called V Rising. It's about vampires. You wouldn't get it. No. The only vampire game I've seen is that little one where you upgrade weapons all the time and it's like your screen is just full of entities. I, I don't know what it is. I see. Yeah. Oh, no. You weren't being sarcastic. Sorry. Uh, that's called uh, Vampire Survivors, <laughs> I think. Different game. <laughs> what was the joke there that I was missing? <laughs> oh, that I just sit in my base all day and upgrade my gear and I never go out and do anything. Oh, no. I'm not uh, I'm not that big of a DGG. -er. I don't uh, watch all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, oh, fucking, are you keeping up with what Dylan is doing at all? No, why? What's he doing? Because, like, at this point, I think he's, like, inside of Ukraine, and I don't know, is he working on some, like, big documentary that he's coming out with all at once? Is he dropping content while he's there? Like, I don't really understand what he's doing. Uh, me neither, because I don't keep up, so. Oh, day. I thought you guys were, like, homies. Uh, I think we're friendly, but I'm not like messaging him every day or anything. Gotcha. Um. Oh, here's here's one. Uh, here's one last thing, okay? Because then I'll I'll let you go and I'll let you enjoy your game. Because I I'm not sure you're gonna beat this guy while focusing on this conversation. I'm beating him this time, but go ahead. Okay. Um, I think that especially on the left there is this weird thing with disempowerment that people seem to think that like things are hopeless they don't know what to do they feel like everything is doomed um and streamers are very fucking lazy people uh when it comes to doing anything but streaming mm -hmm. and so when you're asking them to do activism or to organize or to plan anything they seem incapable like you could probably get fifth graders that would be better at it than the average group of streamers mm -hmm. so I've been thinking about uh, organizing some people together who will just be points of contact for community members to help individuals figure out what it is they can do near them that would be volunteer related. So you could say, hey, uh, this is my zip code. Uh, I would be interested in helping with homelessness as an issue. And uh, what, what kinds of things could I do? I'm free these days of the week. And then you would find something for them to do. Uh, you would figure out a day that they're going to do it and keep up with them. Um, and that would be the job of maybe at the beginning, like one to three people on Discord. And then you could reach out to different streamer communities and say, hey, do you have a pet issue that you like? Well, just shout this out for like five minutes. And then if anybody from your community joins, then we'll also give you for the next week, like the story that they had about volunteering and you could use that in the plug for it. Okay, and so this would you can do oh, that, but I think you have to make these things exciting because the reality is, is that like people aren't gonna wanna do this type of stuff normally because it's really boring. So you have to find a way to make this. Like, I think my shit worked. Um, I think my stuff worked because I was there and because we were all kind of like having a fun time doing it. But if you don't have like that kind of draw in, people aren't going to want to be involved with it. So that's a really important thing. Like just setting up people to volunteer across the country. People aren't going to want to do that. They're going to want to be part of a group or somebody doing it. It's got to be like a social activity at the same time. Okay. And what do you recommend to make it exciting for people if you can come up with anything at all? Um, I mean, well, for me, I mean, I think me being there and having everybody chilling with each other was a lot of fun for people. Of course, but mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to replicate that. Well, that, I mean, that's what, I mean, just think of like, if you were a random person, would you go to whatever event well, you're set up? Like that's the... Well, maybe that's a miscommunication here. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be setting up any events. What it would be for is if there are people in your community that actually want to get started in volunteering or they actually want to get started with something local mm -hmm. and they have no idea what to do, you would be the support system for that person. So you would find them the thing to do, schedule a date when they're supposed to go, yeah, follow up I with do them that? after. Would you do that? You're saying? Yeah, like, am I gonna, somebody's gonna email me like, hey, I'm from Kansas City. I'm like, well, let me look up places for you to volunteer. Uh, the thing would be that this organization would do it. So me and a few other people on Discord would do it. And then we'd work off of a spreadsheet and keep up with the dates and stuff. Why though? 
why would anybody want to do this, I guess? Like, if they were that driven to go volunteer on their own for something, wouldn't they have already just found it? Well, that's the thing. Talking with people while I've been hosting and stuff and talking with people in my community, it seems like when you handhold them all the way through, they will do it and execute on it. But if left to their own devices, if you just give them a website that they can look up the things or you just promote a possible thing they could do on the stream, that isn't getting them all the way there. But if you handhold them, and some people have been handheld, that's how they've been able to get started with it. So I think yeah, I that agree. I agree with that for sure. But it's just got to be: do they want to be handheld? Like I don't know. Like if there's no payoff, it feels like you could advertise this to a thousand people and maybe get one person that would want to do it. That'd be my guess. Okay, because I feel like advertising to two or three hundred people, I could probably get a handful of people. Is what my guess would be. I mean, hey, you could try it right now. Advertise, go. Okay, well, if you've ever thought about getting involved locally, you've missed the DGG canvassing events and stuff like that, and you don't know what to do locally, and you kind of want to make friends doing that, maybe get involved with some other people in the Twitch space that know all the memes and stuff like that, and they do the same things that you would be doing, then feel free to reach out. Like my my Discord that you could personally DM me at, uh, please be nice, uh, trolls, which have, there are a lot of in this community. Booksmarts hashtag 1004. You could also email me, booksmarts.twitch at gmail.com. And uh, just think of the moral superiority in every single argument you would ever have if you could point to the fact that you're doing hours of volunteer work every month and every lefty dumb fuck does absolutely nothing but complain about these issues for hours on end. You would be ahead of most streamers in this space simply by volunteering once. Wow. You could do something once a month and have moral superiority over almost anybody you would talk to on the Destiny Discord or anywhere else. So mm, that's something to consider, debate bro people. Nice. Just imagine shutting down a whole conversation by asking, oh, okay, what have you done to, to make steps towards alleviating the transgenocide? Mm -hmm. Like, are you volunteering with any organizations? Have you showed up for a hearing in your state? Oh, you've done nothing? Oh, interesting. <clears throat> I do think that for... Um... I do think that if you wanted to like supercharge like a volunteering movement, making it competitive would actually be you would you could accomplish a lot. Like, um, could you imagine, for instance, like if there was like some natural disaster or something was going on with hospitals and there was like a blood shortage, if there was like a blood drive competition between the DGG and like the VGG community, like who like whose members can donate blood more and you like you keep tags, somebody's like actually tracking to make sure that your blood donations are happening with pictures or some shit. Like I think you would get a lot of people going out because they would want to be part of like the winning community. I think this is a how to win friends and influence people thing that like if you like using competition, you can motivate people to do a lot more than than normal. Like I think there would be people that would actually die donating too much blood just because they'd be so competitive for it. But yeah. Interesting. Would you I think the answer to this is yes. Would you be interested in like when something happens, letting me know, or when I see something happen, I could hop on here and we could like brainstorm ideas for how to add a competitive nature to something like this? Maybe, but other communities have to be bought into it as well. They'd have to want to participate, right? Or you could ask them to do it unofficially, but then they would get crushed if they didn't have official support because I would be plugging the fuck out of this in my community, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, although another interesting thing Imagine if there was a VGG versus BGG thing and you got to pick one banner or the other for the event. That could be the thing that brings you guys back together. All of the Demon Mama people and serfs and whatever could sign up under the VGG flag and mm -hmm. then all the DGG adjacent people could do that. Yeah, you totally could. I mean, like, look at like the R Play stuff. That's kind of like what happened there, right? Mm hmm. I said VGG, you dumb fucks. Well, you said VGG and BGG, but that's okay. Oh, whatever. Von no. LGG, it's okay. <laughs> You're just being more formal. I appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, okay, that that's a fun way of doing it. You'll pick one flag of the big streamer or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then there could be individual stats for everybody else. So like how many people did a relevant get? How many people did uh like... Because if it's something like a blood drive, you could even probably get people on the right to do it and have a, some of the competition be right versus left as well. Like, mm -hmm. I wonder if people like uh, Lauren Southern would be interested in doing something like that. Yeah, you probably could get a ton of people involved or even stuff as silly as like, um, like getting people together, like counting like bags of trash that are picked up. 
right? Like you get like 20 people to go to like your local beach or like a local lake or whatever, just pick up bags of trash. And you like tally that shit up. I wanted to do that for my canvassing events. I thought it would have been cool to pair every one of them with a uh, with some sort of like community volunteer effort. So either we'd all go down to a soup kitchen or we'd all go down to like a like a local area and just like clean up trash. But um, it wouldn't have worked out with any of the scheduling because I was already asking a lot from people. But I feel like pairing any of your causes with stuff like universally good volunteering stuff, it just it's, it's good for a, lo- for a large list of reasons. It builds character, makes your movement look better. It actually makes a positive contribution to that community um, gives you more credibility with other groups like there's a lot of good reasons to participate in stuff like that yeah well i mean there's a solid pitch for it and i am already receiving dms so it does seem like people are interested in it so there you go just saying just saying um like are you still doomer on doing any kind of like organizing like it doesn't have to be with a political campaign where people could attack it right like I have joked about it, but honest to God, a really fun project. It would probably take a couple of years just to see if I could gain any traction on it. It would be really fun to try to pen like some sort of like legislatively effective gun control and then find out like if there were people in the House or Senate that we could super pressure around the country to like get a few people to like present this legislation in Congress. It would be super fun to try to get people on board with that. I saw somebody in my subreddit that made a suggestion for gun control stuff that I hadn't seen done really before, um, where basically it's like a more bipartisan ask where you're making some concessions that don't matter, and then you're getting asks that are like really important. Um, that would be a lot of fun to do, especially if we made any headway there. But that's a pretty big <laughs> gun control is obviously a huge issue. But yeah, yeah, what's standing in your way of getting started on that? Um, it's that type of like real life political work is a huge drain, um, psychologically and, uh, time wise, businessly. I don't know what I'm doing, what what word I'm looking for, but it's a lot of work to do stuff like that. And it's all thankless. None of it would benefit my career at all. Um, there's no money there. I'm losing money doing it. Um, there's a pretty big, um, emotional investment if you lose because people make fun of you for it etc there's like a lot going on with that type of stuff and i could but like the last thing is like so fucking annoying that it's kind of demotivating but maybe we'll see this is an interesting human side of you like did it feel particularly humiliating to have people make fun of you about the gudgel thing not for me but the people that worked under me i felt bad for them Mm. that there might have been a lot of people that showed up to those events that ended up feeling like losers because of people like Mike from PA or Vosh that are like shitting on them or Dear and Mama saying, oh, well, these guys were Josie, like saying, oh, these guys didn't do much at all. Um, I can take an unlimited amount of abuse because I don't care about these people, not respect their opinions, but I don't want to like put my fans like in the crosshairs of like other online people. That is kind of sad to me. I don't want that to happen. Especially when they're so justified in what they're doing. Like they're actually trying to make a difference. They're actually a lot of them going through a lot of effort to mm-hmm. try and go out and do this stuff. Like I think it was snowing at the time you guys were doing that shit too. Like Yeah, I'm pretty sure one dude broke his arm and drove home because <laughs> he <laughs> slipped. He didn't tell me until afterwards. I was like, Jesus Christ, but yeah. Yeah. And if the energy was anything like Georgia, like it, it's just such a fucking positive thing that these creators taking shots when they're doing like, I, I hate to say it, but like, absolutely nothing. Like, uh, I mm-hmm. don't know. Well, hold on. Vasha said he's going to do um, a political action committee or something. Oh, I but... thought he said canvassing or something. Who knows? He keeps saying he's going to do something, but he's also telling people that the political process is hopeless. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, I will praise it when it happens. I mean, it, you could praise him over the charity stuff for sure. Um, but organizing is such a different beast entirely, which I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe in praising people for charity shit, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, I, I think it's I good to think do that... charity stuff, but it's like the people do it for class. Here's like the issue that I have. And like, <laughs> I think that charity is good. If you want to do charity, it's good. Even if you get a lot of clout for it, I think it's still good to do charity, but I'm not going to give you like social credit for it. Um, I notice that like people will generally only do things that are beneficial to other people if it's also beneficial to you. And charity streams are definitely like that. You get a lot of viewership, you get a lot of positive attention, and you get to say in the future, you've got like a dollar value saying, I donated X, Y, Z dollars, I raised this money. Like all of it is like massively advantageous for yourself. So whenever people say, you're like, oh, well, I did charities. I was like, okay, that's fine. But you did that for you, right? You didn't go out of your way. You didn't even donate your own money. Like what the fuck? Like at least do like a $10,000 match or something, you know? Um, but like, yeah, like I, I, don't, I don't give people like social credit for that. You can get like some credit though. It's a good thing to do objectively. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna look at you as a fucking hero. 
Well, I'm of the wicked supreme mindset on things. I think we should encourage people and praise them when they do the things we want them to do because it makes it more likely that they'll keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a re- yeah, somebody chat said it. There's a reason why Hassan does a huge charity stream after every big like drama he's involved in. I mean, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, of all the things they could do to bounce back, I would rather them do that than a subathon, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I mean, I guess, sure. Yeah, that that that's why I would uh, definitely praise them, but I definitely also wouldn't make it about, like, how it could benefit them personally or whatever, because I just don't want to discourage them from doing it. Um, mm-hmm. And it can be so easy to do that, especially if you say it in front of all these people and then they say it to them. Like, I know the impact that has on me, and I, I would worry about the impact it would have on other people. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> okay just saying just saying difference of opinion there i, I won't debate you about it but yeah uh, makes more good things happen i think for sure <clears throat> all right well uh here is the most dangerous question i'll ask you all stream okay okay for me <laughs> have you seen anything else recently that is problematic of mine that you did not like no not recently i don't think Okay, thank God. Good Holy job. shit. You've been flying low. <laughs> I'm so scared every time you come up. Like, uh, we had a dodo goal to listen to you talk to Rose Wrist after. And, like, you would say something that was, like, over-exaggerated. And I would be like, oh, bro, I don't know. I don't want to, like, uh. That's, good. And then that's Rose... called the chilling effect. <laughs> you can't criticize <laughs> me. That's, that's the whole point of my criticisms, you see. <laughs> But then Rose would correct it, and then I would I would have a sigh of relief after that, and be like, oh, "Okay, okay, R- R- Rose is pushing back. That's good. That's good. I don't have to say anything." <laughs> well, I'll try to stay in the good graces of DGG as much as is reasonably possible. Please don't get in any controversy that would cause me to go otherwise, bro. I, I don't know if my tiny heart can handle it. I'll do my best. Okay. Okay. Well, have a good rest of your night. Have a good stream. Uh, and uh, have a good night, DGG. I love you. Bye. I love you. Bye.